Καταρχάς, είναι καλή χρονιά, χρόνια πολλά. Είναι η πρώτη μας εκδήλωση για φέτος. Μέρο του ΔΣ που αρκετά μέρη είναι σήμερα μαζί μα. Η Μαρία, η Ελένη Αντωνούλου, ο Ντίν, ποιο άλλο είναι το ΔΣ. Εκ μέρου του θα ήθελα να σα καλωσορίσω στη σημερινή παρουσίαση. Θα ήθελα να σα συστήσω στην Μπακ Κόφμαν. Η Πατ είναι. Ε, αγαπημένο μας μέλος του σωματείου μας και είχε την α, ιδέα, την έμπνευση και έχει και την επιμέλεια για αυτή την πρόταση που έκανε για, για την παρο, να παρουσιάσει τους α, καλλιτέχνες που μένουν μόνιμα εδώ στα κύθερα. Την ευχαριστούμε για αυτή την σπουδαία ιδέα. Πιστεύω με, α, θα πάει πάρα πολύ καλά. Ellen, unmute yourself. There you go. I've been talking for half an hour. <laughs> no, no, no. You to talk for 30 seconds. That's all. <laughs> Did you hear anything of what I said before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, go back about 30 seconds. Not, not long at all. I would say that I'm very sorry about the nervousness, the that the epimelia po he has allowed you to have to have to αυτή τη σειρά παρουσιάσεις που θα γίνουν με τους καλλιτέχνες που ζουν και εργάζονται πάνω στα κύτταρα. Η, η Πάτη η ίδια είναι η Γλύπτρια, έχει ζήσει στην Αμερική και στην Αγγλία όπου εργαζόταν, αλλά τώρα έχει επιλέξει να κάνει τα κύτταρα, το στραπόδι, το, τη μόνιμη κατοικία της εδώ με τον σύζυγό της που μένει εδώ ούτε σε άλλος. Λοιπόν, η Pat, uh, αν είδατε την αφίσα μας, οι δύο ώρες uh, θρόνοι που είναι εικονισμένοι στην αφίσα είναι έργα της Pat. Uh, η Pat uh, παρουσιάσει τη δική της δουλειά σε ε, μια επόμενη παρουσίαση. Και uh, αυτό η, η Pat θα αναλάβει να σας παρουσιάσει τους σημερινούς uh, καλλιτέχνες. Λοιπόν, θα, θα συνεχίσω τώρα στα, Αγγλικ, uh, στα Αγγλικά. I would like to say, wish everyone a happy new year for a start. Uh, this is the first event of uh, the Friends of Museums of Kithera uh, for 2021. Uh, we hope uh, that it will, will be a, a very good year for us all, and not like last year where we had nothing to do. Uh, we couldn't have any events. Anyway, I'd like to introduce this evening, Pat Kaufman, who has, has, um, has uh, had this wonderful idea of um, showing, uh, introducing us to the artists who live and work on Kithra on a permanent basis. Uh, so there will be a series of these presentations, which Pat is organizing for us. Uh, we are very privileged. Pat is a sculptress. She has lived and worked in America and England and now has made her permanent home in Strapodi uh, where she continues to work and to help the friends with her in various ways. So we thank Pat graciously for her efforts on behalf of the council and the members of our friends. I mean, we are very grateful to have such wonderful members. And uh, so basically I think um, Uh, oh, the other thing was, if you saw our poster with the two wonderful thrones, they are works of art of Pat's, and the view is a stunning view from her home. And uh, anyway, we thank her for that. And I pass you on to Pat uh, to introduce the the artists that we have today tonight on our for our presentation. Uh, once we finish here, um, if you would go into speaker view, and then you will have a prominent view of the main speaker. Uh, I thank you on behalf of the committee and hope you enjoy this evening's presentation. Hi, hi, my name is Pat, as you can see, Pat Kaufman. Uh, 
welcome to all of you. I'm so glad you're showing up. This, I had an idea since we're here, uh, hunkered down in quarantine and uh, with COVID, that given how many um, artists are active on Keithra on a year round basis now, it would be nice to keep it for Keitherian uh, residents to keep in touch with what's going on here on Keithra in the winter time. And I thought it might be a nice idea for you to become acquainted with all with a variety of artists that we have. So every two weeks up until June, uh, we have a different artist presenting themselves. And tonight, today is our key, uh, is our teething, uh, is our test. So, but we're having a group of three people, Masha Zusman, Maria Skina, and Valerie Bulletin, who've come together and over the past three years, is it, that you've been working together? Three years, yeah, they yeah. have put together a series of exhibitions in the, um, in the Philharmonic Key in Porto Moss. And they have been incredibly involved with Kithira, Kithirian matters, with uh, the population, with school children. And they have put on actually world-class exhibitions. So just briefly for housekeeping, um, I'm going to turn it over to, to the, the group called, uh, I just lost, I'm getting nervous. So I've just lost the title of the group. I'm gonna let them introduce themselves. And at the end, if you would like to just uh, go down to your chat, if you have a question to ask the artist at the end of their talk, send me your name and I'll put you on a list and we'll take you on a first come first serve basis so that uh, they can ask, answer your questions. And now it gives me great pleasure to turn you over to Masha, to Maria and to Valerie. Hey, good evening. Good evening to everyone. I'm Masha. <laughs> and then Maria, Maria Sineski and Valerie and, and my left or right, I don't know how you see. Um, we can speak only, Valerie and me, we can speak current only in, in English. So um, so what we will do in the translation, Maria will get a brief a translation to the Greek before each chapter that we will um, uh, proceed with. And, but first of all, I would like to, to thank uh, uh, Helen, uh, friends of the museum, and Pat for inviting us uh, to be um, to participate in this uh, uh, in this new project and uh, and to be the opening lecture. It's an uh, honor and a, a bit uh, nervous also to be the starting uh, uh, people. Um, and I also want to, to, to thank all of you guys who came this time uh, uh, independently of the, on the time zone and to, uh, to listen to our story. Um, by the way, do, can you hear us well? Okay. So, uh, Maria, do you want to say a few uh, sentences in Greek before we start? Uh, to introduce what you're gonna say. Uh, or this? No, uh, no. Okay, we'll make. I'm it. okay. I will uh, okay. proceed later. So I will just uh, um, tell a few words that uh, three of us were visual artists working in the um, painting and the video art and uh, photography. But uh, our this project that we met and started to do together, it's more concerned the um, kind of curatorial uh, activity and running and organizing the exhibition space. And you will, you will see it and uh, you will understand it during our story. So I will, for now I will share the screen. Okay, I'll make a share screen. Um, and just one more second. Okay, so for the beginning, uh, um, we would like uh, to take all of us in, um, in spite of all the lockdowns and all the 
borders and the cons uh, and the problems that we have this year, we want to take all of us to, to Kisera, to a uh, town of Potemos. And uh, there actually our story begins and, uh, and goes, okay? So here we are. Right. We are landing. Yes, we are slowly. landing. Yes, we are slowly landing in Potomos, and uh, exactly <laughs> on the platea where the those of you who knows there is a place. Okay, just a moment. I cannot uh, change. I cannot change the, the slide somehow. Okay, maybe here. Okay. And this is the place uh, of a, a Philharmonic um, Orchestra of Potamos, brass band of Potamos, which he uh, placed for the last um, almost 35 years in the second, on the second floor of this house. And this is the place where for all these years, twice a week, uh, the band, uh, uh, the brass band of Potamos was uh, um, meeting for, for their rehearsals and different events. And uh, it usually, it was very nice, cozy, maybe a bit messy place, very homey. And uh, four years ago, the Panayotis Lifteris, the current uh, manager and conductor of the band, had a, an idea to to refresh to refresh the, the play the space, um, and uh, it was as usually with these ideas to refresh something. Uh, it's a, it's kind of a risky idea, but Panayotis took another risky idea. He decided to uh, ask uh, uh, three of us, um, knowing that we are visual artists, to give him advice. Uh, about the paint, how to, in which color to paint the wall of this uh, space. I'm not sure that uh, he would know that uh, where it will take us, uh, he would do this uh, once again, but uh, what, this is what he did. And we started to think about uh, the, we took everything from the space and started actually gave him some advices uh, about the possible uh, color of the wall. And more than that, we just started to, together with the members of the band, we started to renovate the place. And I just want to mention at this point that uh, um, all the activities of the Philharmonic band uh, is basically going, they, uh, Philharmonic doesn't have any um, uh, permanent uh, budget. So all the activities there, supported by the community, by the, mo by the box of the nation. And for us, it was kind of a good opportunity to, uh, to give our share, to contribute to the activities uh, of the band. And we just started to, to renovating the place, but, uh, and uh, we started from the walls and then continues to the furniture and then continues to the uh, to moving the walls to, to continue to the light and after the two months of the work actually we we uh, finished with this with a space which looked like that and uh, being all of us the as i said uh, it, the visual artists with a big experience actually and activities with a uh, curating and organizing exhibitions we couldn't resist uh, thinking about using this amazing space uh, as an exhibition space. And there are, uh, the space also, uh, we also organized and they reorganized the, um, uh, the stage and it became a very good place for, the, for screenings and you had a new uh, kind of um, living room part. Uh, and uh, so the space and even the new place for, for the maestro. 
but our main uh, our personal idea which also surprised us we have to say uh, was to to use uh, this space and to um, also as an exhibition space and to hold exhibition in in uh, um, uh, in this place so that's what we started to do and the first exhibition that we, we um, decided to make in the space, which was kind of a short, uh, we didn't have a lot of time to organize that, but we have an amazing opportunity uh, to, uh, and generosity of our friend and colleague, uh, uh, John Statatos, who uh, um, helped us to host the exhibition of historic photographer by the, um, um, photographer Le Leonidas Papazoglo, which was uh, working in, uh, in the um, uh, town of Casteria uh, in the north of Greece in the end of 19th century, beginning of 20th century. Uh, Leonidas Papazoglo was, a, he was apparently like town photographer like many others, but he has some uh, amazing quality of approaching people and taking the, the best of, of their uh, photographs. So uh, the archive of Leonidas Papazoglu, which now uh, I think belongs to the, uh, into the uh, Thessaloniki Museum of, uh, of Photography, we, we, could, we had this uh, amazing opportunity to exhibit uh, uh, this, uh, the, photo, the photographs of his archive in our new, uh, a new space. Um, I just will mention that this, uh, the, the the uniqueness of this um, of this photo of these photographs, uh, except that the artistic quality is also the historical one because uh, the the um, this moment of Castoria and in, in the end uh, in the very end of Ottoman Empire, kind of brought this. Um, maybe um, you know lo forever lost it uh, picture or, or and reality of multi multicultural multi-religious multi-ethnical place where people uh, for good and bad live together and these photographs of Leonidas Papazoglu kind you, you can you could feel it in, in this uh, in this uh, in his photographs and uh, so this was the first exhibition um uh, and uh, it was uh, accepted with a very warm, uh, uh, very warmly. A lot of people came to the opening, and um, and also the, the the news where it was spread in the island, and people were um, continue coming. Also, as we understood, uh, actually, it was clear for us from the very beginning uh, that. Uh, what we want from this space, it's not, not of course, not to uh, only to decorate the walls of the Philharmoniki uh, room, and of course, not to making of it another white cube gallery, but uh, our concern and our um, thoughts were also about how it's not only what we what. What does it mean to have uh, the gallery space, to have an exhibition space in a community community place like Philharmoniki, in small uh, kind of uh, in small town on, on a remote island, far from from uh, usual uh, art uh, venues, and uh, and then one of the, our aims was actually how and, and questions was and still is how we bring. Uh, people from to to see what what we what is presented and to how it can how it can serve people so one of the things that we started to do on this very first exhibition this to we approached the, the school this the schools actually and started to bring through the uh, teachers bring children and and uh, uh, there were teachers who uh, uh, had hold their lessons in, in the in the um, uh, in the exhibitions. For example, this is the picture from one of such lessons where the kids started from talking. I think it's a kids from of 
from primary school primary or school or yes grade. second yes. it means like 10 years old mm -hmm. something like this so they started from talking about the photography in general like uh, white and black photography and and it ended up by sitting and drawing their own pictures and, and the drawings in front of the uh, of the photographs so this was the first uh, the first exhibition um and it gave us a lot of a lot of uh, motivation and uh, desire to continue um and now valerie will tell us about the next exhibition which uh, happened actually one almost one year or a little bit less after this first one okay hello uh, okay, so uh, thinking about the uh, next exhibition that we wanted to launch, of course, we thought about um, people and um, uh, and the place which hosts it. And uh, naturally, it was uh, music. Uh, music as a big phenomenon, not only sounds, but also a relationship. So I'm talking about composers, performers, uh, listeners and uh, how the musical ideas are recorded, how they communicated to musicians and um, how we perceive sound and how we know what is music and what is actually uh, noise. So, um, uh, ex uh, and uh, being a visual artist, as Masha no uh, noticed already, we've been more focused and interested on the visual part of uh, phenomena and this is a music scores uh, I will uh, dive into it a little bit later but uh, uh, we decided to, uh, to call exhibition iconophonia which is a combination uh, of two Greek words I don't have to explain you but I, I'll try anyway icona which is a picture and phony which is a, a voice so you could translate this uh, combined name which we invented for this exhibition as a voice of the image or image of the voice or something like this. And um, the exhibition uh, uh, contained of two parts. One was historical. We were trying to um, investigate and to show a very interesting and beautiful example of uh, actually more modern uh, music notations, which are called graphic scores. And the second part of exhibition was our uh, rela uh, reaction as uh, three us as an artist in collaboration with other musicians and uh, performers. So now let's, uh, let's uh, look uh, at the uh, traditional graphic score. This is a graphic score, uh, uh, a, a notation. This is Goldberg variation, but Bach, it doesn't really matter. But uh, what is actually music notation? It's a system of, um, of uh, symbols which uh, try to communicate musical ideas from a composer to the performer. Usually it's completely symbolic. It has nothing to do with the piece uh, which is uh, which you could sound and there was a lot of methods and types of uh, music notations uh, starting from um, uh, 2000 years before Christ in Sumer Sumeric civilization uh, and it was always developing but um, uh, we get to this kind of uh, classic and more uh, uh, recognizable uh, kind which I just show and uh, this one is from also from the Bach notation which from um, from the density and the way it looks you could kind of maybe it has a hint on how music could uh, could be heard of but otherwise it's a uh, completely symbolic and uh, now I'm showing you an alternative uh, this is what we call a graphic score and um, what it is, what is graphic score actually? The thing is that the music in the, um, uh, from the beginning and uh, especially in the middle of the 20th century changed so much. It's, uh, it's, it's really expanded uh, boundaries and it, um, uh, it couldn't be written anymore in this uh, conventional way of notes on a five, uh, on a five line stave. Uh, 
music became uh, there was a lot of electronic music uh, and uh, a noise was included and suddenly a performer is not anymore just a passive uh, a guy who executes the will of a composer but he's also a participant of really music creating so composer had to find new ways uh, to 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 um, to show uh, and uh, to transmit their ideas. So they started to look at the, at the drawings and graphic arts and other things to take their inspiration. Like this is quite a, a stunning example. Uh, it's totally abstract. Uh, this specific piece is given to millions of interpretation and in contemporary music, every performance is different. It depends, uh, the time is different. Uh, uh, the, it depends on the performer, how he will execute it and how long time it will take. This one looks completely um, abstract painting, but actually it is quite a precise uh, direction for the performer. Um, so uh, the first uh, uh, part of exhibition, as I already said, was a historical part. We found after a very meticulous uh, research about 24 graphic scores of uh, let's say 16 or 18 um, leading composers and we exposed it in a um, chronological way you can you can see the scores up and the the uh, information details on each specific score and the composer who who did it uh, so now to the second part of the exhibition. Uh, and uh, let's have a look at this. Um, as I mentioned be before, it had three pieces, three collaboration of each us of us with a different uh, uh, sound artist. So let's go now to the first one. I mean, it's first basically maybe because then you enter the space, this is the first thing you see, it's a big wall piece. Uh, it's a piece, uh, uh, it's a collaboration of Masha Zussman and Musica Nova Ensemble. And uh, it's called the Catalog of Warships, Mediterranean Sea, 2018, part one, Submarines. Actually, it uh, draws its inspiration from a catalog of ships from Iliad of Homerus, uh, which eternalize the long list of ships and people who participated and uh, died uh, probably in, in the Trojan War. And the Masha chose to deal with these submarines as uh, something made to be unseen and un unheard, but it, uh, and she was looking for a poetic ways uh, to contemplate and express the in invisible but very disturbing presence of these objects in, the in our Mediterranean Sea. Um, her catalog is, uh, uh, it, it, it has 61 submarines belonging to eight different Mediterranean countries, which has their um, uh, um, submarines in the sea. And it is, uh, um, each submarine is represented by a, by a piece of uh, paper coated with a graphite and with the name of each specific submarine written or presented in a braille uh, type. I mean, it's something you cannot really see, you can kind of sense, you need to have a special skills uh, to do it. And, um, and the sound piece was exploring the possibility to manipulate a recorded sound of the of this, uh, uh, musicians that I already mentioned, uh, and they try to try to manipulate it to the level that was almost uh, on the edge of ultrasonic. We can hear now a little uh, sample, maybe. Let's go one. Uh, yes. I don't know. Wait, 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 wait. Mm. Can you hear? Can you guys hear what you're listening to? I mean, it's almost unheard <laughs> But if you hear something, it's good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
uh, this is a catalog of those uh, vessels that I said. And uh, now we go to uh, Maria Schina collaboration with um, Panayotis Kudainis. Uh, he's a, a sound artist who's also live uh, of, uh, at least part time on the island. It's called Lighthouse Book, and it has uh, several parts. It has an artist book light box that you can see above and uh, and uh, as i said also the 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 sound piece next the project is based actually on uh, data which was collected from 800 lighthouses um, uh, around the mediterranean shore the it's uh, the data which has to do with those lighthouses i'm talking about height the brilliance uh, the flashes uh, the position, uh, the ge geographical position of each lighthouse became a base uh, for uh, uh, the information was collected, studied, and first uh, uh, Maria put it in a visual form on the rice paper and she collected, collected a kind of um, multi layer um, uh, book, which we will see later in an example. And uh, the same data was also entered in the computer program, and uh, and the result was uh, a sound piece, which I don't want to get now into details. But um, um, it was uh, uh, the, the idea was that the computer scans from right to left as the sign rises all the um, uh, lighthouses, passes through all data, and produces the sound based on the. Um, on, on the, this data. So we can hear again a little example of it, one before. Yeah. It's supposed to be. Uh, turn your volume down if it's too loud, people. Where is, where is it? I don't know. It should be somewhere there. No, I don't know. We, can, yeah. uh, we cannot find it for some reason. Maria? Uh, yeah. Okay. So well, we okay. So this is the book we are talking about. It has a lot of layers combining different information. One of them is actually a photograph of a Kiterian uh, Mudari lighthouse. You could sit down. You could see it uh, as one of the layers of the book. Uh, this is one of the pages. I'm sorry that we couldn't uh, have a sound, but somehow we have a technical difficulty here. And now to my collaboration with uh, Panayotis Lifteris, uh, mentioned before as a, a maestro and uh, the director and the composer of the band. Um, it's, a, it's a video piece, actually. It's a multi-layer, uh, uh, multi uh, it is a pro projection of rotating 3D object. As you see, it has 20 surfaces. With the, on each surface, there was a fragment of an X-ray photograph. And uh, those X-rays, actually, they capture objects which got accidentally stuck in the human body, as you see this example. Um, so I choose to deal with the cases then those uh, objects, which are called foreign bodies, uh, they are stuck in the throat and they abstract the way physically and also metaphorically for a voice to come out. So uh, I gave instruction, uh, we, me and Panayotis, we gave ex uh, uh, instruction to several participants, musicians and singers, professional and not ones, to produce sound imagining certain objects stuck in their throat. The result was recorded and arranged in the sound composition. Now you'll have a little sample. <laughs> It's not an easy material, but uh, it's honest from the heart. Oh, from the throat, let's say. Uh, it also has a, a little story written on the subject, uh, and uh, that's more or less about it. Um, now, uh, I wanted to show you that the band as, a, as a, our main public and the user of the space also responded 
was a was a modern composition. Masha, can you please show? <laughs> composition, uh, not so contemporary, but modern from the 60s, 60s of a composer, uh, Lamont Young. And that's how the score looks like. It has a, a chord, two notes, Do and Fa, and the, the um, direction to the musician is to be held for a long time. So this is also music. And the next thing that I wanted to share is uh, 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 lessons and activities that uh, was held in a space in the time of uh, exhibition with the kids. In this case, by Chloe, who is a professional uh, musician, but she teaches music uh, kids also. She created a graphic score and she trained kids to, to perform it. Actually, she also explained them how you actually can create your own graphic score. So we will listen to it a little bit and then we'll show you the score itself. And uh, the score itself looked like this. Uh, it's created this all this sim symbolic uh, structure, which was shared with kids, and they understood what they should do. So this is about it, and I will uh, pass uh, to Maria, who will tell you about next exhibition. Uh, hello to everybody. Uh, I hope uh, I hope you haven't get uh, tired uh, yet. Um, so after this difficult project that we have to, to deal with, uh, uh, people were coming to the exhibition and were explaining about graphic notation. And of course, we have been asked how you can read these strange notes and all this. We decided to go to something more light. And because one of the major things, as Master referred before, was to bring people to the to Philharmoniki. Uh, we wanted, in a way, to bring people, but also to combine it with something that would be interesting for them. Of course, first of all, we start uh, in what we were interested in again. Uh, so one of the things we were interested in a lot was about archaeology. Uh, there are a couple of times that we visit this amazing museum in Hora that uh, the Friends of Museum of Kithira really succeed to do it. And we're very impressed, uh, not only from the exhibits, but also the way it was exhibited. Also, we really enjoyed it because we went in inside the, the museum and we didn't have to rush. We didn't have to be stressed because it was too big, the museum. So we had these two in mind, two things in mind, to bring, to bring people to the museum. Second, no, to, to our uh, exhibition space. Secondly, we like a lot uh, archeology. span uh, Third, we like a lot all these strange objects sometimes we could find in the street, in all the abandoned houses, uh, very well made and that have captured the time on them. 
And, uh, and because uh, uh, as artists, we're very interested also about the history of art and what is uh, object uh, trouvé or uh, um, we decided to make an, an, an open call. So in this open call, we write down and I read it. Dear friends, you are invited to participate in a new exhibition which will take place in Philharmoniki Center of Potamos. We ask you to choose and bring us one object that you found on Kithira and decided to keep. The object could be made of any material and have any dimension, could be old or, or new. You could have picked it for its decorative or useful properties. The only restriction is that it has to be man-made. So after this open call, we gathered 52 items, uh, which are uh, displayed, have been displayed in this exhibition space. No, I, will, I think I will do it. Okay. Uh, so they don't have all these objects were abandoned or lost at some moment by someone at a different instant collected by someone else. They don't have any archeological value. They're not obviously beautiful. Part of them are dirty, damaged and worn. They are not expensive or unique. We can imagine this object being a part of an anthropological museum or folklore collection, or we can see them in the perspective of the modern art, which has a rich history of displaying objects in the sterile gallery space, or they could be even merchandise of a secondhand shop. If now we see all these objects. Each object has one label that uh, had information about uh, the object itself, but also some information we gather through internet. This was very interesting for us, as easy in a way it could be that people brought us, brought us these objects. The most difficult is to find more and more information about each project. For example, someone gave us this project, uh, this uh, object. It was a um, clepsithra, a sun timer, uh, that it has traveled from Kithira to Australia more than 10 times. Uh, another person gave us this uh, Gyumi. Uh, it was amazing that uh, a woman came to the gallery and recognized this Gyumi as a piece that her father used to make, to make when he was alive. Uh, also another person gave us this uh, bicycle. For us, uh, it was a really big surprise because uh, it, as artists, it was referred to, to the champ, to, to the wheeling, to the Bicycle wheel of Marcel de Saint. So, uh, if we take time and be attentive, I read again from uh, our text. If we take time and be attentive and observant, the object will unfold in front of us. Together and apart, they will tell stories about us and others, friends and strangers about those who lost and those who found. They will link us to the past and maybe give some insight into the present and even to the future. But this collective act of sharing the object connect us with each other and create a new story, history. So for us, it was very interesting to meet all these people and having all this conversation between them and see the reaction towards all these objects. Uh, and now, of course, the band was there and giving our uh, a small um, welcome. Welcome. <laughs> also, we visit with the kids, the exhibition, and we talk about many, many things.
And now I will pass you to Masha. Uh, okay, this is back to me. I'm back to actually real time. We, uh, we, uh, we got to the, our last uh, exhibition, which started in the, almost one year ago in February 2020. And we couldn't imagine it will stay till now, but because of, of all this strange year, it is still in the space and no one can actually enter, can, can see it, which is very uh, frustrating. But uh, uh, I will tell you about this uh, exhibition, the, which, uh, as I said, was open in the February 2020 and um, uh, had a very um, kind of good beginning and then uh, fall into the uh, first lockdown, a bit wake up, woke up in summer and now we are still in the, still dreaming some th there in the second floor of uh, the building in the Potomos, uh, in the deserted, almost deserted Potomos. Okay, so this, our last exhibition, um, we uh, we didn't know. We never know where what we will play, what we want to do. We start from some. Uh, we starting to to search for the ideas, and um, at some point uh, we said, "Oh, let's make exhibition about maps." We said, "Oh, great, great idea! Let's make exhibition about maps." Um, so we decided that what this what will we do what will we do uh, without actually realizing what we are entering into and uh, the moment we started and committed to this uh, idea more and more we went into the subject we understood how huge even impossible uh, this subject is and uh, we for moments we actually were even lost and didn't know where to proceed um, but step by step, uh, with our research and learning and understanding and collecting visual materials and learning different maps and reading a lot of texts and books, we actually realized that what interested us in maps is their very strange and ambivalent quality. It's from the one side, when we see map, we kind we are ready to believe it. We want, we, we, are, we see that the map brings us a reality. But if we, we look deeper, we understand that every map has either its own agenda, um, political, uh, religious, cultural one. And, but even without this, if we will just take some kind of professional map, which is done for some uh, um, proper, pop, um, an example of scientific uh, issues, it, the, the simple fact of trans, trans, transforming or translating the three-dimensional three -dimensional reality on the two-dimensional page already brings on a distortion. So maps, they always lie, lie but they, they both, they kind of bring us a reality, they, try, they help us to, to know the reality, but they also create their own reality, which is a layer of maybe if, if such a thing exists, reality. So slowly we kind of realize this, this our interest and our subject of the ex exhibition kind of exposed in front of us or during this process. And um, this was the name of ex the exhibition that we choose. I love maps because they lie. And this is the line of the poem of a Polish poet, uh, Wisława Szymborska. And uh, this exhibition, like uh, the one uh, that Valerie was talking about, uh, the graphic score exhibition had two parts. One part uh, was more historical and we brought our selection of different maps, uh, global maps, uh, world maps, which kind of give us um, shows different examples of, of perceiving the reality, of presenting the world. And the, the other part, uh, and we, we collected information and, and tried to, to present different, this uh, collection of, of maps, each one of these maps. And another part, which actually was, this is the entrance part of the exhibition, uh, 
it uh, consisted of two books concerning Kitara, concerning our local environment. And uh, here, the, this, um, we decided to bring to, to the space the map of Kitara, um, um, topographic map of Kitara. And you can see we made it in, the, in a, it's, a, it's a real topographic map of Kitara, made in a scale one to 7,400 feet. It means that in one centimeter, it was, it was referring to 74.5 uh, meters. And we asked, we invited people, it was another open call, we invited people to come and to help us to transfer this, this map uh, to the wall. And for the almost three weeks, people, um, more than 50 people came to, to help us and to work with us. I, I, I wouldn't even have to help us, just to work with us. And together we created this, this map, this map of, of Kitera. It was day after day in the morning and the afternoon, people were coming, we were going, and it, it was quite an interesting and exciting and tireful, uh, tiresome pro, uh, process. I actually want to say something about this map. Two, two interesting facts uh, happen, two things happen. One was that during us working on this map and, and this exhibition, uh, we got this news on the island about the, about the uh, wind turbines. And actually this, this came with a, with a piece, with a, with a capture of the same, the very same topographic map of Kida that we are were kind of working in, in the art context, but by suddenly this topographic map, map became the place where these dots of, of, of a future, I hope not, hopefully not future, but this proposed uh, wind turbines will, will supposed to, to be. Uh, and uh, we actually could, people uh, were coming and, and asking, okay, where, where this, suppose, where this uh, wind turbine say meant to, meant to be? And this artistic project became very relevant suddenly to the, to the current moment. And another fact, another, another, another thing which happened actually also totally unexpectedly was the fact that we were working with carbon paper. So we were just tracing the, tracing the um, uh, topographic map uh, through carbon paper. And it has very beautiful blue color. Maybe you can see, maybe you can see here. And, but while working on this tracing, do they hear you? Do, they hear do you me? hear me, by the way? Ah, okay, because, uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. sorry. So while working on this, uh, on this tracing and being exciting about the whole beautiful lines and, and strange, strange map, which is uh, appearing on the map, we suddenly, um, we suddenly notice it that this this line which are we are tracing beautiful uh, blue lines they starting to disappear they are changing in front of our eyes they are changing their colors and they lost their blue color and became become kind of other color so this map was a kind of a living creature this map of the island was a living creature in front of our eyes it is still there in the, in the in the space and philharmonic totally different of what we started with and the kind of um, it's it's a disappearing map or disappearing island so this two two uh, two episodes kind of um, um, I think was worth mentioning. Okay, and the next, another, another, another work which was in this uh, space, uh, also concerning Kitara, was uh, our kind of animation, small animation, me, me, meditative work, which we called 32, 32 islands. Okay. It's 32 maps, so, sorry. Uh, so what we did, we, we tried, we found, we tried to find all possible maps of Kitara. Uh, the, starting from the Venetian time of uh, in, in 15th century and finishing the, um, the um, no contemporary recent maps. And we combined it in, in we put it on the chronological on the timeline and make a, we, and made a kind of animation where one map were changing into another map. Okay. Uh, um, this is one of the examples of like that one crop 
of this uh, of this video and it's actually interesting to mention that if you will, if you look at the first maps of Kithera from Venetian times you know the the north part of north part of the of the island just didn't exist the map didn't didn't go further than the than the middle of the island and so how this was the map so the first maps of Kithera was totally totally um, you know how to say it? Oh, strange. Yeah. Not even how. Yes, yeah, it's, it's very strange. You couldn't even understand where these forms and shapes came. Uh, okay, so this this was this uh, um, uh, uh, space. Okay, so just just a second. Technology. And this, the, the second part of the exhibition, as I said, concerned the the global view, the global map. The world, how the world was presented during history, during in different places, in different cultures, uh, with different intentions, with different aims, and uh, we, ha we have uh, um, how many? I don't remember. Like forty-two. It's thirty-two. Also. Ah, that it was, was actually really yes, it was strange number. We have also the how the space could uh, could uh, accommodate thirty-two different maps. I didn't go and I will not go into the details. Each map, map is, a, is a story, each map is a history. Um, just a brief uh, few of the, to show a few of them. It went from, from historical maps, uh, like for, and comic maps, and maps from, for example, this map is from the Soviet Union. Maybe I will, for, for those of you, I'm, we had one guest from Australia, I think, I don't know if, if he's still with us, but we have this also this map, which is called Mark Arthur map, where the Australia actually is in, in the middle and this it's not in the north, is up and the south up. So, which is the same as, I mean, it's different, but, but you know, who said that North should be up and Australia should be down? Just the matter of the matter of, of convention, actually. Yeah. Um, and this map, I want to finish to showing this map of a uh, Buckminster Fuller, one of the um, inventors and 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 uh, um, important figures of 20th century. The, his map. Uh, he called it Spaceship Earth, uh, uh, the Maxion, the Maxion map, uh, and he tried to bring the world in a way which is not divided and which is not um, ir doesn't have hierarchy of up and down. And uh, so, actually, this what we wanted to basically to show in, in this you know, in this exhibition that you know. It's maps. It's only it's only the layer of on the reality, and we have to be aware of it, and we have to be also sensitive and and uh, and uh, critical. critical from one point, but also sensitive to what we have, like to this island, which changing and 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 <laughs> hopefully will be here forever. It doesn't matter which maps we will uh, create and uh, what we'll do and this. And uh, just one example, like the kids also, we, we, we had a lot of, when it will be still, when it was still possible, we hosted a, a lot of kids uh, and this time teachers really came and make their lessons and, and, and brought the kids to, uh, to this uh, and, and hold the lessons in the, in the space. You see this, uh, this teacher with the, with the globe and we made a, Funny, uh, funny uh, presentations uh, to explain the kids what does it mean projection? How you can how you can uh, present the the sphere, the globe on the on the flat surface. So we just took a took a um, orange and try to cut it in, and to put it to flat it in different ways. And um, this is one of the activities. So we will finish with this uh, nice uh, flower map if you want and um thank you once again for your for being uh, with mm -hmm. us and if you have questions we are we are, will be happy to to hear
to hear and to, and to try to answer. Yeah. Thank you so much. That is just wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Look, anybody who has a question, uh, if they wouldn't mind just typing their name down on the chat, and then I'll take you uh, one at a time uh, as you come up, uh, come as you go, uh, come as you go basis, and uh, have Marsha and Valerie and Maria answer your questions. So I don't see anybody on the chat now. So I'll just start off. Marsha and Valerie, how? Um, what is your next project? I think that's probably a good way, a good way to start. And meanwhile, could people, do they mind going down to their chats if they have any questions or any comments they want to make? Um, we, have one, we have one from Tony Caravusanos. He's wondering if you have any exhibitions planned for 2021. Yeah, yeah, I'm uh, holding, I've let you. Marsha, you have to unmute. Okay, now, okay. okay. There you go. <laughs> okay, yes. Who will, so, uh, who wants to answer? Well, I mean, <laughs> as, uh, as uh, people here mentioned uh, before, we never really know what we're going into. We have uh, quite a broad, very broad idea. And this time we, we would like uh, to do something with the, um, how shall I put it? Maybe phenomena of uh, of uh, fabric, but uh, weaving, 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 weaving. Yes, yeah. weaving. you know, maybe I will better pass it indeed to girls. <laughs> they would yeah, you better see, explain. You it. see, it was a hard question. Okay, if you have some easier one, probably a bit better to start with easier one. It's hard because we we don't know yet. We have some ideas, and as Valerie said is uh, we are kind of flirting, checking, touching the idea and the whole area of weaving and the fabric making. And we want to, um, we speak about between us about uh, how can we look at fabrics and weaving from the abstract point of view to put it in the field of the maybe abstract art, but it's very, very, uh, early, although we have already many meetings and we, meet, we, meet it, we, we met people and we saw a lot of things, but still it is not very clear. Mm -hmm. But let's say we have an experience uh, both from our personal work and from our personal projects, it's a normal stage, we will be fine. Mm -hmm. And we hope that um, somewhere in summer uh, we will have new so, exhibition yeah hopefully. i mean now it's it's difficult yeah. because valerie and we were now leaving we're going to israel for four months so it will become more difficult to work together but we are in the process okay um thanks dolly do you did you want to come in and, and say something i noticed that you had something on the chat No. Okay. Well, I suppose if there oh, are. She's no asking. More... She's asking. Hello. Uh... Oh, good. Hello there. Hello, everybody. Very nice to follow. It was really very good. And missing Keith here a lot. That was, you know, a very nice experience. And uh, I've seen most of the exhibitions, and I really, I was really astonished, not only pleased, but astonished as well. And what I would like. My question was that I have been meeting a lot of artists that either leave or, or regularly visit Kithira, but anyway, they are very strongly related to the island. And a lot of people, they don't know each other, or they might know one or they might not know the other. And I think it's so positive and so good to get to know each other. So would you consider creating a group? That was my question. Um, well, uh, I think, uh, let me just jump in. I think this is our way now of starting that kind of communication. Uh, as we have at least eight artists now 
who are living full time on the island. There are many more. There is absolutely no reason why we can't have everybody give a presentation and that way get to know each other. That's my hope anyway. Uh, Pat Montaigne has a question. Uh, one Pat? second. Ah, ah yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Pat. You have to turn your microphone on. But you have to unmute. Her. Uh, no, she. I. I've given her permission. I think there you we go. Are. Okay. Hello, Pat. Yeah. Hello. Do you hear me? Yes. 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 Oh, I have no question because I have too many. Uh, <laughs> I just want to tell you that. What you did now is fantastic because you brought life back. Really, do you understand what I mean? During this period, suddenly I felt that life was back with you on this uh, on this uh, screen. Thank you, Pat. I hope that we will be back soon to the. Yeah, to the real life, I mean, to the life outside, mm -hmm. not only on the virtual, on the computers, on the screens. Yeah. And of of course, to... but thank you for what you did now. It really, it, it brought me life. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Our pleasure. Thank you. How do I cut? We have a question from uh, Tony. Have a, want to say something? Oh, no. All right. Does anyone else have any questions? If not, I'll open up the 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 microphone so you can chat amongst each other. Oh, I lost everything. <laughs> if that's okay with Pat, I'll I'll fine. Yeah, please open it up. Great. No worries. And first of all, I'd like, I would like to really thank Marsha and Maria and Valerie. What a tour de force! I'm just I'm just grinning. I'm just grinning with pure pleasure. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Okay, thank you guys, thank because you. for us, we like, we are sitting at... Uh, and Eleni, thank you for hosting this. Unmute yourself, Eleni. I've asked you all to unmute. Thank you very much. I just wanted to say thank you. That's all. <laughs> I'm unmuted now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Fascinating. Everything was fascinating. I'm just, this is all going on on media? I mean, I don't even see this here. So this is amazing. <laughs> I, I'm, uh, I used to work for a map company in California for five years. So this was just a wonderful uh, surprise and I'm going to share it with my former coworkers. <laughs> when is the next Zoom planned? Uh, hold on a second. Yes, it's February 7th. Thank you. And we'll be, we'll po be posting this on the FMK site um, and we'll announce each artist before, but next week will be me, and then we'll be followed by Manoli, ha uh, Manoli Haros. Uh, uh, following week. And I have the dates here, I'll just have to flip my pages, but it will be posted on the site. If I may just say something, um, if everyone can hear me, I have to apologize. Uh, I'll say this in Greek. Πρέπει να πούμε συγγνώμη σε όσους α, παρακολουθούσανε και δεν μιλάνε αγγλικά, αλλά δεν είναι εύκολο. Θα, ο κάθε καλλιτέχνης θα μιλάει βασικά στη γλώσσα του. Α, λοιπόν, κάποιες φορές θα έχουμε ελληνικά και κάποιες φορές θα έχουμε αγγλικά. Um, I'm just saying that uh, in, in the future presentations, uh, each um, artist will be speaking generally in their own language so that we have a balance of Greek and English. It's very difficult to keep a, a balance, of course, uh, in English and Greek. So some, we will have artists who will make presentations in Greek and some artists in English. And we will try to have a resume of, of their work in, in the other language. Um, on, on behalf of the friends, I thank everyone for, for, for joining us. And we had a wonderful participation. Uh, ευχαριστούμε πάρα πολύ ό, όσοι παρακολουθήσατε. Ήταν σπουδαία. Ευχαριστούμε πάρα πολύ τη, τη Μάσια, τη Μαρία και το, το Βαλερί, την Πατ για την έμπνευση αυτή. 
Ε, η, 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 ε, έχω πάει και εγώ στι εκθέσει και αισθάνομαι ακριβώ σαν την Πάτη Πόρταν. Ήταν πάρα πολύ ευχάριστο και, και α, οι εκθέσει που κάνανε ήταν κατατοπιστικέ και ήταν μια μεγάλη προσφορά στο νησί μα. Πάρα πολύ μεγάλη προσφορά και περιμένουμε την επόμενη έκθεση. Uh, I was just saying that the um, exhibitions are organized by, uh, by, um, by uh, Masha and uh, Maria and Valerie were, were wonderful, a, a, a great, um, uh, a great uh, beneficial to the island, the, the children who attended, to all of us. And um, we thank them for their input and we look forward, we're really looking forward to their next exhibition, which we hope will be this year. Uh, any more questions? No, I'll pass on to Pat. For... Thank you very much. No, I'm finished. <laughs> Terma. Terma. <laughs> any more questions from anyone? Any more, uh, anything else before we close? I, I, would like to, I would like to thank the presenters as well. Um, I can't talk very loudly because the rest of the house is asleep. <laughs> but uh, um, it certainly is another aspect to Kithira. The cultural aspect that you've brought to us is wonderful. Uh, Kithira is not just schools, supermarkets, yeah. and uh, um, shopping in the streets or, or p p picking olives and, or picking grapes. Uh, you have brought some cultural aspect, some enlightenment, uh, to the history, some of the um, parts of what you're saying, of what you've presented, um, in fact, most of it is not in the school books. And uh, you've opened our eyes to something that's quite interesting and, and uh, thought provoking. And thank you very much for that. I look forward to the next one as well, uh, even if it's three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Oh, let me just say, this is going to be posted um, I, oh, did we record this? I hope we did. Did we remember yes, to yes, do yes. that? Oh, um, thank God. Okay, it's going to be posted so anybody in any time zone can catch up. If anyone has any concerns with their privacy, let Pat know so that we can blur you out and mute you. Um, <laughs> but yes, if not, <laughs> uh, th this will be on hopefully our YouTube channel tomorrow or the next day. We'll have a, a new YouTube channel uh, presenting all of the, the FIMI cars, uh, various things that we plan to do for the year. Um, Dean, Dean, how long does this um, recording stay on the YouTube channel? Uh, indefinitely, as far as I am Good. aware. Uh, thank you. I, I would like to forward it on to the rest of the um, people of the Catherine Association in Australia. Sure. Uh, I'd, I'd also like to thank uh, Dean for all his technical <laughs> input. Uh, without yeah. Dean, we can't do all this. Dean, we love you. Thank no, you. No, you can do it. You're just, you're all just afraid. Anyway, I'm happy to help. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Bye bye. Okay. Thank you all. Bye. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye. Bye. Uh, Helen, bye. Helen, can I just say?